Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams and thanks again for joining us, whether on radio at 99.1 FM, WJMM Central Kentucky Christian Radio, or at WJMM.com. You can click on the podcast tab near the upper right, click on Love and Lordship links and get today's and the previous two days. You can also find many more at loveandlordship.com or at vimeo.com forward slash love and lordship and loveandlordship.podbean.com. The first of those is videos. The second are podcasts. Uh, check us out at uh, or, or email me at uh, loveandlordship at gmail.com. Now, having revisited and established according to God's word what love, authority, and humility are and why they are so absolutely necessary in the lives of Christ's followers, we're going to shift a little bit today to the practical application of these virtues and truths in our own lives and relationships. You might be saying, well, I know what love and authority are, and we do pretty well in our lives. My, my question it would be to you, what I ask often to others uh, when they're in my office, what is it looking like? You say you understand, you say you're doing pretty well. What does it look like? Are you doing it in line with God's word in order to reap the benefits, the fruit, the blessings that he desires to bless you with in your life? Or are you deceived by placating yourself and others in your life just to keep the peace or to get what you want by giving someone else what they want? You see, that's the way the world defines love. And that's not love. We can make it look good for a while, but eventually that's going to buck up against our own selfish flesh and sinful nature. Apart from Christ, we can't do that. You see, the latter is not real love or servant leadership. And it will always show up lacking at some point in your life and relationships, usually at the most inopportune times. Isn't that always the way to call it Murphy's Law, right? But it's really we're reaping what we've sown. So what is real love and real authority in real life? Let me ask you a few questions just to get the ball rolling and whet your appetite a bit further for what all this means and the contrast between God's way and the world's, between our flesh and the enemy's ideas and God's truth. What or who do you love? Well, I'll answer it. Maybe you follow along, right? I love my wife, my kids, steak, pizza, salads. Just threw that in for health reasons, right? Okay. <laughs> Chili dogs, our dog, Mackie. Yeah, love them. Maybe you like cheese, chili cheese dogs and cats. I don't know, but I'm your host, Greg Williams, and as promised at the close of yesterday's program, we're going to apply Jesus' teachings and modeling of love and authority to our own lives and relationships. Obviously, we love, like, feel strongly about lots of things. Okay? Let us know some of the things that you love. Share them at loveandlordship at gmail.com or message me on the Love and Lordship Facebook page. You see, God, who is love, had some very specific things to say about love and how we should live it out in relationships. I want to share three key concepts of godly or agape love. Remember, that's the Greek word, Greek word for God's kind of selfless, sacrificial love that prefers him above all else. At any point, if I compromise his truth or love, I'm not being loving, no matter how much it makes the other person feel good. And that's not for, agape is not really for chili dogs or pizzas or puppies, right? But it works really well with my wife and children when I do it. And, and, and then they understand and give me grace when I stumble. You see, agape, once again, literally means that my love for others stems from God's love for me and my love for him, preferring him and his truth above all else. When I compromise that, I move out of love. Do you consider his truth and love in your decisions, actions, and relationships? Do you consider it above your own feelings and thoughts? Above what others think about you? There's some good food for thought. I'll have some more at the end, right? Before I continue with this teaching, I'm compelled to say the following. If you've been listening to the authority of love from the beginning, you're hearing some things repeated. I'm saying some of them in different ways, but in no way compromising the truth of God's word. At least I pray I'm not. And I encourage you to continue with us and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal and teach you more so we can all disciples other, disciple others in Christ more fully. That's what we're called to do. Not just invite them to church. That's a good thing, but don't stop there. 
grow in the Lord. Go from the milk to the meat, as Hebrews says, so that you are not only maturing, but you're helping others. With that said, I, I am again am compelled to go back and make sure our new listeners are able to hear, and I pray benefit in maturing God's word and his Christ disciples in their own life and in the lives of those they touch. Thank you for the new listeners, and I pray you would invite others to join us if you're, if you're being encouraged and growing in Christ. Thank you for sticking with us here and the authority of love, and I'm praying daily for all listeners to continue to mature in Christ and help bring others to him and disciple those who don't know him as Savior and Lord. Now, with that off my chest, uh, let's dive into God's Word and see what these things are, what he says about love and how we are to love so that we can do so in authority according to the author. Remember from a couple of days ago. That's what his truth delivers, and we would do well to align our lives, our relationships, and all our life accordingly. Having said that, he begins with this. Do you know that scripturally speaking, we can only love because God first loved us? That's powerful. We can't love apart from receiving and knowing him and his love. That's 1 John 4, 19. Everything I try apart from Christ, no matter how hard I try, is done from a selfish heart. That's who we are according to God's word. Truth, right? Right? That's a hard thing to accept, and many in our culture and even in our churches have never heard that and don't accept it when they do. But we can choose to accept and grow in his love or disagree and find out on our own. I would venture to say that all of us, including and especially myself, have tried the latter and found out. I've also tried walking in God's truth and love, and everything changed and continues to change as I grow in that and for the better. Christ not only loved us fully, but made it possible for us to experience and share that kind of love, but only in him. So what does that look like? Second key principle, love is lived out in a priority of relationships. God is a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God, and every covenant has an order. We are in a covenant with God in Christ. That's what the New Testament or New Covenant means. The priority and order are there for a reason. God doesn't waste or mince words. They're very straightforward. Yet we nearly always ignore or downplay them in our own discipleship and in our churches with others and in our relationships. We can't love until we know and accept his love. That's what we just said point number one was. Then Jesus tells us how to accomplish this kind of love and relationships. Mark 12, 29 through 31. We have to begin where he does. And he literally states that. Loving God with all we are. If I don't follow through on the first and greatest command, then I can't love who I am in Christ in order to then love my neighbors as I love myself and as he loves me. Those are the two greatest commands. They sum up all the other commandments. I will keep the other commandments if I walk in love. I can't walk in love if I don't know God through Christ. You see, only as we do this do we begin to see what his love looks like in total contrast to the world's idea of love. What does godly love do? Love, real love, godly love, gives itself away. Maybe you're asking, what? Relationships have a need to be done in priority order? Remember, love is not about feelings. It's about commitment, and commitments require priorities. If God commands us to love in priority, then don't you think it's a good idea to learn how to do so? As a matter of fact, of truth, we can't love apart from God because love is sacrificial and selfless, selfless and we're just not. Christ gives and makes us into that kind of love only in him. Wow, it seems like this takes all the fun out of love. Actually, it puts it back into our relationships according to God's design. And I can point you to hundreds of couples who've learned this and are experiencing the joy and excitement of his kind of love after years of being deceived and nearly destroyed by the world's false love, many of them, most of them, having sat in church most all their life. I close with the third point about love by sharing two simple deceptions about love that persist in our culture but never work. Love is 50-50. That's one. And the second one is love is give and take. No, don't fall for that. 
according to the one who is love, who is truth, who is the authority, love is give, period. When we learn to do that because of who we are in him, remember, because he first loved us, because we are learning and growing in our love for him, the first and greatest command, I now get to know who I am and love who I am, and I can give myself away. Love is give, period. Love is give 100%, expect or demand nothing. His love is unconditional, selfless, self-giving, and never fails. That's what he gives to us. And that's what we're, how we're called to love others. You can find all this in our book, The, the Authority of Love, second edition at Amazon, spell out second, S-E-C-O-N-D, and you'll find it. And if you do read it, give me some feedback. I love the feedback, even good, bad, or ugly, okay? I'm a, I've said this before. I'm a big boy. I can take it. I have alligator skin, okay? <laughs> Food for thought as we close today. What we've talked about today ought to prompt some feedback. Join our conversation at love and, on the Love and Lordship Facebook page or email me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Let's discuss this further as we continue with more on relationships, and in particular, marriage, sexuality, and family, where relationships are truly to begin and then flourish in our churches and then impact others. Three action items. You know the first two, choose to spend time in, with God and His Word and in prayer every day and listening to Him. As you do so, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it means that we can only love because of His first love, for, His love first for us. We can only love because he first loved us. And then third, ask yourself, based on your relationships and how they've gone, family, dating, engagement, marriage, etc., friendships, whatever, why is it imperative that I love God first and with all that I am? Why did he make that the first and greatest? Well, first of all, in, I'll tell you one more tip. In the Greek, that word literally means just like it did in the Hebrew in the beginning, God. It's first in time, order, rank, and priority. It's not just because he deserves it. That is absolutely true. But it's because if we don't do the first command, we are incapable of fulfilling the second. Think on that for a little while, okay? Folks, this is radical stuff, especially based on the way the world and our flesh have been conditioned and taught about love. This includes how we've approached love even in our churches by trying to love and serve others in the flesh as infants in Christ, not having disciplined young and infant believers in what it means to love God with all we are and to worship Him alone. Our prayer and hope is that we will step back and trust the Lord in faith to help us do so, and then we will be able to reach and love many more in His love, impacting them for eternity as they come to know love. Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Tomorrow I'll share on a foundation scripture that helps tie our love for God with our love for others. Invite your family, friends, loved ones, even enemies, you've heard me say that before, to join us as we all need to hear of the truth and love of the gospel of Jesus Christ in every part of our lives and relationships. Thanks for joining us. Thanks always for your prayers. Thanks especially to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. I'm Greg Williams and you're listening to The Authority of Love.